Boom, and we are back. Next, we have our first panel, and the subject of this session is called The Ever-Changing Landscape of Crypto Exchanges. To introduce and moderate this session is a very special guest. Outside of trading, she is almost at the same level of experience in media and film in the media and film industries. She's also an award-winning screenwriter and novelist. She's in the process of completing a cryptocurrency screenplay called Coin Runners, which is anticipated uh, to, to be filmed later this year. Please put your virtual hands together for the one, the only, Lisa Edwards to moderate this amazing panel. Lisa, thanks for joining and take it away. Morning, everyone. <laughs> Hi, everyone, and uh, welcome to our panel, The Ever-Changing Landscape of Crypto Exchanges. Now, with me today, I have uh, Timothea Horn... How do we say that? Hornwell? Hornwell. Timothea Hornwell. Hornwell, yeah. sorry. Um, how, uh, apologize. <laughs> Happens she's all from, the time, don't um, worry. She's the CMO from um, Orion Protocol. Um, mm -hmm. I've got Ignatius... I'm going to butcher these names. Um, Terraninus... <laughs> Uh, it's news um, he's communications from Bybit. Uh, Alex Fazel, he's the Chief Partnership Officer at SwissBorg. And, oh my goodness. Majid Mohsen. Thank you. <laughs> he's the Founder and Chief Executive Officer of um, Oryx Exchange. So welcome. And uh, we're going to have a conversation about the exchanging um, landscape in the market at the moment. So, you know, since the inception of cryptocurrency, we've seen some huge, huge changes in um, exchanges and how they are run and how they are the security and you know, so many things um, that, you know, all these changes have come to this point in the market right now. So I'm going to start off with Timothea and um, get her to, to tell us a little bit about um, user experience in exchanges and uh, what she sees the future of exchanges in the near future. Yeah, sure. Well, I guess I'll just kind of top line introduce myself first. Uh, I'm Timothea, and as you said, I'm CMO of Orion Protocol. And Orion is a is a chain agnostic protocol that's that's building the decentralized gateway to the digital asset market. Because you know, right now, the the market is incredibly fragmented across different assets, exchanges, and and blockchains. And I think the the industry is still too siloed to really evolve to a state of full interoperability without. Um, without that solution that sits across the entire market. So, so that's what we're building, um, not only for, for crypto markets, but NFT marketplaces and, and assets from traditional finance as well. Uh, but as you said, of course, user experience is, is critical. And I think this is a, a critical one for adoption as well, because uh, crypto will have succeeded in, in market penetration when it becomes such a utility that hardly anyone realizes that, that they're using it. And I think it's no surprise that that obviously Coinbase was the first exchange to go public as the most user-friendly exchange. And I think we can see with the success of their IPO and, and the huge growth of, of swap interfaces as well, simplifying the user experience, that um, re uh, removing friction and, and reducing that number of steps that an action takes is, is really what will bring new users into the space. Um, I mean, I think the, the ultimate goal that we all share is expanding our user base, but that has to be beyond the current pool of knowledgeable traders because otherwise we are just simply fighting over the same people. So while, while we've built a, an intuitive interface for Orion Terminal, there's still an element of understanding that's expected in order to trade. Um, you know, the, the learning curve of crypto is steep and this is the largest barrier. For, for mainstream adoption. So to address this personally, uh, we are, are working with a, a platform called Bonsai, who is gonna be built on um, built across our entire ecosystem as a DeFi AI assistant uh, to really simplify the process of, of buying, selling, sending, and, and receiving digital assets. So someone could simply say, 
send Timothy a three Bitcoin and uh, the action would automatically be executed on, on their behalf. So I think it's not just about bringing new people into crypto, but but bringing crypto into the way that people already already operate. And, and really that is what will help us achieve that kind of widespread adoption. Yeah, definitely. Um, Mahid, can we have uh, a little bit of background um, and your first memory of um, using an exchange? Um, yeah, so I would say my first memory of using an exchange is probably, well, one that comes to mind at least is going to be late 2017. And I'm sure everyone has a story from this time, but at the time, Bittrex was the, the king of centralized exchanges. And I remember, you know, watching coins being, um, coins listed on Binance being listed on Bittrex and doing like 100x within seconds. And um, there was one I was trying to get, um, kind of try and ride the wave was um, Power Ledger. And it just got stung terribly. But, you know, I remember thinking at the time, this is it, Bittrex is going to be the exchange. And I guess it's a reminder that your your place or your position in market is never really guaranteed. You know, new projects are, are always going to be in a good position because of their ability to be more adaptable. But there is always going to be someone coming along trying to do what you do better. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Ignis, can we have uh, a few words from you? So you're the communications, the head of communications for Bybit. Now, how has Bybit um, changed the landscape in cryptocurrency? And can you give us a little bit of background about uh, where you started? Of course. Um, thank you, Lisa. It's uh, great to be here. Thanks for having me on. It's uh, really exciting to be a part of this conversation. Um, Bybit is a fast-growing uh, derivatives exchange. And uh, we kind of like serve customers across uh, uh, many uh, um, countries across the world, uh, both in Europe and Asia and beyond. Um, personally, for me, like I'm, I'm maybe slightly late to the game. So like I've truly only been kind of like uh, looking at uh, crypto uh, closely for the past couple of years. But uh, I've always been very interested in kind of like the promises that uh, uh, the blockchain technology as well as crypto has has kind of like installed for us. Um, I think one thing that uh, uh, perhaps people outside of our kind of like little bubble still uh, do not um, kind of like appreciate is, um, uh, and, and for us really kind of like um, crypto is is only really like reaching 2% of the global population, even though kind of like we have little pockets like in Nigeria where the adoption rate is more than 30%. But in, in terms of like overall, we are really incredibly early in the overall kind of like wider adoption. And uh, I think, yeah, as Timothy just uh, very well pointed out, um, there, there's a little bit of like handholding we need to do um, to, to kind of add value to customers. Because like, you know, for customers that uh, that they can turn to, and uh, um, as as exchange, as re really any business in the space, uh, what we want to do is to kind of present the best value proposition, and then we add most value for them. Um, like uh, they, they, a race down the bottom in terms of kind of like just kind of like uh, re removing transaction fee or like kind of like that is is not a healthy way of of, of uh, competition, nor is it a healthy way of growth because like you know next guy can just come up and with with like zero transaction fee or like you know even kick you some back so i think really kind of like the pie is large enough the the industry is growing so fast there is so much uh territory in which we can kind of collaborate and uh, cross pollinate there is uh you know just so much opportunity and uh, like competition is 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 only healthy so long as kind of like we also kind of help everyone grow because uh you know when when uh, um when, when kind of like uh, uh, the tidal wave truly comes, it will lift all boats. Thank you. Um, so Mahid, um, are you, you are the founder and chief executive officer for Oryx Exchange. So how is Oryx Exchange changing the landscape and what are you doing to onboard new customers? And please give us a little bit of information about your background as well, please. Sure. First of all, very happy to be with you today and uh, really my pleasure to meet all of you. Uh, our exchange is, came with a different, uh, myself is the low part, so I came with just a little bit different ideas from what is on the market. And we are proud to say that we are the first ever exchange that's providing cashback for trading. 
in, in such a way, like the story starts, let me tell you a little bit about me. Uh, I start in 2012, where the first time I ever heard about Bitcoin. And I, in that time, I start mining a Bitcoin just to know what is it and how, how to use this technology and to try to find the resources about what is blockchain. And it was so really hard to find by, by that time. And I involved in it because I was, uh, uh, my story was that I was the low price indicator for stocks and forex. And from there, I give up on the Bitcoin because there was nothing that I know what is the value of this uh, Bitcoin and what's the price of it. And I totally forget how much I mine. I use my laptop to mine it for a couple of hours, like not much. And lately in 2016, I start be, uh, rebuilding the, the company with the mind that I really need to be involved on the blockchain itself and to bring something to the to the market. The idea that we came is very simple, that we, the users and the industry is growing so fast and so big. And uh, there is a lot of places where and gaps where the market need to be uh, like counted, the problems that need to be resolved, and the many things that is Give, really give a value for that. And this is where we start with Oryx, uh, uh, that we building the all-in-one ecosystem for exchanging with trade with uh, cashback, uh, where we give also a banking event for our users, and uh, we give them a card with cashback as well. And we are trying to solve so many problems by building our chain. In, in short, this is all the stories we have. So how, um, just to go back there, how many Bitcoins did you mine on your laptop? And if only we could do that now. Um, <laughs> yeah, if the algorithm allowed that, that would be amazing. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And the really, it was like, I don't remember the number really, because really it was hard to know what is the value of this, you know. There was no prices, no exchanges. Lately, I start, like, uh, first thing I start is what was the Bainos, the first project I ever get uh, in touch with and follow all the Bainos stories and get involved on so many IEOs and so, so many invests. But before Bainos, uh, the mining for me, I don't know what the wallet I use, what wallet it is, and something like that. Right now, it's a huge amount. On that time, it was nothing like uh, no value yeah, no, it's, it's nothing like mining bitcoin now you need a supercomputer to crack that algorithm so um i'll go over to alex if you can give us a brief interact introduction of uh what you do for uh swissborg and um and how you are onboarding people uh with the new partnerships that you have there yeah absolutely thank you so much for the question lisa by the way can you guys see me no just your uh name Okay, so the video actually came out. I'm sorry, for some reason, it got cut out. But yeah, so long story short, uh, I am the Chief Partnership Officer at Swissborg. We are a 100% community-backed and driven crypto wealth management ecosystem made out of Switzerland, but owned by the world. We're driven by an ICO. And uh, yeah, we have a great, great team. And by the way, everyone watching on Theta TV, don't forget to share your experiences as well. Let's make this interactive and fun. The questions can be to you as well. But yeah, when it comes to you know onboarding and the evolution of, of the crypto sphere, you know, I think Timothea really hit the nail on the head. You know, for those who like hip hop out there, you know, the Bitfinex, Bitstamp, Kraken, and Coinbase out there are the hip hop OGs, right? They're the Ice Cubes, the Wu Tangs, the Snoop Dogs, and the Tupacs, right? And I think we really need to give credit to these people because they were the soldiers knocking on the doors of the banks, you know, really telling the banks, please give us a fiat gateway to provide mass adoption. And as Timothea was saying very well, it's all about UX, really. That's that's the key point that was struggling in terms of crypto. And I think Coinbase, by the way, Coinbase, guys, is the biggest IPO of all time with a $100 billion valuation. That just shows how credible the crypto space is. The biggest IPO of all time is a crypto company. And you know they were making a uh, billion dollars in revenue last year, but guess what? Binance, imagine Binance was actually making a billion dollars in profit. So imagine if Binance did an IPO, this is how much potential we have in the crypto space. But 
you know, really these exchanges, Coinbase and Binance understood UX. They realized this is a market driven by retail and not by the institutions, which is the first time in history and very exciting about it. And they realized, you know, all the technicalities, all these order books, all these technical jargon, like limit order, stop loss, bid ask, and all these complexities wasn't fit for retail. So they just created something with amazing UX. And really, still, that is the name of the game. You know, if we want to succeed now, the institutions already have lots of cool tools. We have derivatives here on this platform. We have leverage trading. We have banking custody levels. You know, we have everything we need for institutions. We have OTC deals where Tesla, where MicroStrategy can go to Coinbase and get massive orders filled. You know, these are things that in terms of institution, in terms of product offerings, we've done a lot, a lot. But now it is really still about refining UX. Even DeFi, when it comes to the exchanges, there are still some big limitations. There's limitations in terms of the UX, of course, because you need to custody, you need to create your MetaMask and and you need to, you know, work on gas fees and, and fiat gateways. And there's so many hoops to jump through. And even though DEXs are scaling as of today with layer two solutions like Starkware, it still is not enough. It's not enough for your older brother, older sister, your aunt or uncle or mother or father to get into this space. And that's what matters the most, right? We need to provide tools for everyone to be able to get in, right? And DeFi is just not offering that at the moment. And I love DeFi, but again, it's still very exclusive to the geeky and the rich who are willing to pay for gas fees. So at SwissBorg, you know, what we're trying to do is we're trying to offer the easiest solution possible to get into crypto. But more importantly, because many, many exchanges as of today are really focusing on DIY, we're focusing on automation. Automation as in you can do everything in a few taps at the tip of your fingertips. So that is really what is important, the UX through automation, not having to have too much DIY, cutting out all the crap and making a a very easy solution for everyone to be included in this beautiful industry. So thank you very much. That's a a really awesome um, explanation of the future of crypto um, currency exchanges and what you've got happening now. Um, Timothea, um, I'd like to ask you, basically with the Orion protocol, so how moving forward is that going to integrate into exchanges, into just uh, general everyday public coming into the system? Yeah, so I, I suppose the benefit of Orion is that we, we don't integrate into exchanges, but we aggregate them into one platform. So. Mm-hmm. You know, I think the the critical issue in 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 the crypto landscape is liquidity. I mean, I've heard someone refer to crypto as nothing more than a fight for liquidity, and we've obviously seen a growth of aggregators in the space, uh, but they have been siloed into either centralized ag- aggregators or, or decentralized aggregators, and there's been no solution that transcends the two and offers a decentralized access to centralized liquidity and. And after all, as, as Alex said, you know, the, the user experience on, on DEXs, you know, could, <laughs> could be improved. And one of, the, one of the critical issues is the lack of liquidity. The majority of liquidity is still held on, on centralized exchanges. So um, with our goal to provide the decentralized gateway to the digital asset market, we have for the first time ever uh, provided, you know, decentralized access to the likes of Binance, KuCoin, and um, uh, Bitmax, and sorry, Ascendex, and, and more. So uh, from, from my perspective, it's about pulling in every single possible exchange into one place. And in and doing so, you, you are aggregating every exchange's order book and therefore are providing the best price at any given time. Um, you also, you know, that reduces slippage and very little spread and, and also gives incredible arbitrage opportunities as well on the platform. So by aggregating every kind of exchange in, into one place, the, the goal is to save traders their time, their money and, and their assets, which arguably are three of the, the more important things. Um, so you know, traders don't need to spend time exchange hopping to find the best price for their assets. Um, so we, um, and we- Sorry to interrupt you there. So with that, um, so Orion is going to integrate a a lot of new features from what I've heard. So um, 
you know, that a, a lot of the traditional exchanges don't have. Um, mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. So um, we are planning to introduce uh, NFTs. We're actually currently building an NFT aggregator, the first in market. Um, and off the back of that, building an NFT oracle also. Um, we are introducing decentralized copying. Um, we are staking of any asset type. And we're doing this by pulling liquidity from the likes of, uh, of Metalex and you know, different, different brokers to provide these various sources of liquidity on our terminal. And I think also what's important for us, as I spoke about the kind of interoperability or the lack of, we're building on pretty much every major blockchain in the space, Cardano, Polkadot, uh, Phantom, Avalanche, BSC, Echo, Elrond, and Ethereum. So uh, we, our goal is, is to provide access to the space in one place without having to compromise your assets. So how, how do you feel about, um, I'll put this a general question out to everyone. Um, so the majority of the liquidity in the market, it comes from Tether, as we know. So, um, you know, that comes through Bitfinex and then it's uh, sort of uh, divvied out to all the exchanges as such. So um, platforms such as Uniswap and PancakeSwap don't have a lot of access to this at the moment because they're using uh, MetaMask and Ethereum or BSC networks. So um, how do exchanges moving forward that are coming into the market get around this liquidity issue? Maybe. <laughs> Alex, would you like I to think Lisa, that's a really good question. Yeah, I would, I'd love to address that. You know, I think to see, and a lot of the projects here understand that the, the future of exchanges and desktop apps and actual mobile apps is really about aggregating liquidity, right? Like the liquidity crisis is not just through Tether and, and Bitcoin. It's through, you know, many, many different trading pairs, right? So aggregating through multiple order books as we're doing. So kind of like if exchanges were you know your British Airways or your Singapore Airlines, uh, we are the kayak, we are the Google Flights, we are the Hotels.com that aggregate that liquidity. So that's one thing to to keep in mind, and I really think that's the future how it's going to look like you know in years to come. But um, in terms of liquidity and tether, like a lot of people are worried about this topic specifically because they say if there's something where there's a crackdown on tether, that would crash the entire market because people are lending, borrowing tether for leverage trading, all that kind of stuff. And, and it could be a big threat, but Tether's not going to go down. You know, the, we, the Tether guys are in Switzerland. They've been asking for audits and stuff like that. And, and it's just, it's not something that can collapse that easy. It's not, they will be around. They're doing hard work and obviously they have lots of steam and people are worried in terms of the regulatory parts. But I can tell you that they're in Switzerland and there's absolutely no issue. It's very unlikely that Tether will go down and liquidity is just through aggregation, as simple as that. And I think a lot of people in this panel are trying to solve that problem. Most definitely. Um, Ignis, how is uh, Bybit addressing that issue? I think liquidity was like uh, uh, something that we kind of uh, knew we had to address in the beginning, but we currently are doing quite well in terms of liquidity. Currently, the open interest on um, BTC USD contract or petrol contracts uh, on Bybit is the second uh, highest in the world. And we are ahead of CME on, on that front as well. I think really kind of like in the beginning, we just really incentivized uh, market makers into providing liquidity. And we were very, very kind of like uh, uh, hands on with um, uh, talking to our customers. One thing that I, I sort of like to circle back on is like uh, talking to customers is, is that I think this is like one of the most down the um, underrated way of just to do things better, like uh, for, for us to do to do things better, because customers they often will just tell us like exactly what the pain points are, exactly what we should do, and they often will even give us the exact words to kind of like sell the idea back to them, and. Uh, um, yeah, like so. Uh, as as I said, we we currently have like the the the, high, the, the second highest liquidity in terms of uh, BTC USD, and uh, for kind of like a, uh, a number of like uh, leading altcoins as well. Like uh, for ETH, we are also number two, and uh, like we we like. Um, in coin compares data, we saw a 34% growth in Q1, whereas the leader 
actually saw a 9% decrease. So, you know, maybe just in another quarter, we will be the number one in the world in terms of uh, open interest in ETH as well. Uh, for, for USDT, yeah, I agree, sort of like there's some concern there, but like the, the latest kind of like uh, uh, settlement with, with the uh, um, NYAG kind of like is is kind of providing some uh, uh, good outlook. And uh, we've been seeing kind of like the, the printing the, the printer at uh, at uh, um, BFNX working again, so I think that's not a not not a worry in the short term. And, and in the long term, we are we are seeing more and more kind of like alternatives in terms of USDC, in terms of kind of like the uh, uh, algorithm uh, algorithm based kind of like the other stable coins. I think in the long run, everyone's want to be a, a part of this space, and uh, you know uh, the stable coin is going to be a, a problem because like the the legacy banking system. Is is the kind of a, the biggest bottleneck? It's not the the transaction speed or like capability matching capability of the crypto exchanges, but rather kind of like the 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 bridge, the the gateway between fiat and crypto world. So I think yeah, in the long term we will need to find better solutions, crypto native solutions to solve that. But uh, in terms of liquidity, um, I think yeah, um, just from from our experience, we are doing pretty well. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, Mahid, um, would you like to talk about liquidity and onboarding for your exchange and how um, that is functioning? Well, same last point. Liquidity is not a big issue 2021. There is a lot of, uh, of sorting to, to fix this problem. For us as exchange, we are, um, uh, we are makers for PTC, Ethereum, and uh, so many peers. And there is really a lot of uh, coins and altcoins on the market, which for us, the point we are focusing and interesting to me is the bridge between, as, as we he said, that the bridge between fiat and crypto is the, the, the pain right now. That's where we have to figure out, as all the exchanges, how we can give a policy to customers to go through fiat to crypto and crypto to fiat in an easy manner that will make them comfortable using it in and out from it. Where uh, really the market, if you see the market cap right now, it's huge, big, and there is a good liquidity on the market. Ourselves, we are market makers and we have a good liquidity on PTC, Ethereum, as, as, as so on. And we are looking to add so many. Uh, Altcoin that we we can we are considering, but again the pain is on the bridging between fiat to crypto and the crypto to fiat. I think it's the must be important uh, point that we need to focus to to resolve, and this, this is what we are exactly doing at our. Thank you. Um, so now I'm just going to ask everyone to uh, give us a couple of sentences to tell the audience where they can be found and. Um, Basically, you know, something you'd like the audience to know. So I'll start with Alex. He's frozen. We won't start with Alex. We'll go to Timothy again. Thank yeah, you. Jump in in the meantime. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, find final words for me. Obviously, it's a pleasure being here, and I think it is really important to have these kind of cross silo discussions. Um, and and can collaborate uh, you know, with with kind of different exchanges. For, for us, it, a, a successful decentralized financial system won't be measured by its ability to exist separately to opposing entities, but one that kind of acts as an intermediary between the world consumers know and the world of DeFi. So really happy to be here with um, with everyone and. Um, to if, if people want to discover the, the, the first steps towards the future of trading on Orion Terminal, it's trade.orionprotocol.io. Can we find you on Twitter as well? Yes, so it's at underscore Orion Protocol. And we're also on uh, Telegram um, at Orion Protocol as well. Amazing. Um, Igneous, where can we find Bybit? I think uh, everyone. Our web. <laughs> <laughs> Our, our website is just bybit.com and you can find us on Twitter uh, at uh, bybit underscore official and we are also on Telegram, uh, you know, just uh, the usual. Uh, so um, yeah, really, really happy to kind of like uh, have more conversations on just how we can collaborate as, as Timothy Riley pointed out, you know, like uh, uh, 
it like our our goal is is not to kind of like compete with one another, but like you know take down the the legacy players. Uh, I think kind of like mm -hmm. there's 98 percent of the world still still kind of like very much in the legacy system, and uh, you know there's there's so much that we can do. The world is large enough for all of us to thrive, and uh, you know perhaps not such good news for the legacy players. <laughs> Um, Alex, um, can you give us a, a few words about where we can find you? Uh, you were frozen just before, so where we can find you uh, on the web, on Twitter, and where at other regions. Thank you so much, Lisa. And and by the way, guys, so yeah, obviously SwissBoard.com. You can also check out our YouTube channel, which is called Kryptonites TV. It's purely educational. We don't accept money. We don't accept sponsorship. So it's for the community. And I just want to kick off with one last message based on what Ignis was saying. You know, I think, you know, really one thing that we need to look at in the future is I know everyone is kind of battling. You're not decentralized enough. You're too centralized and all that. And I really think we need to, as a community, accept that everyone is different and that one size does not fit all. That's one message that I like to share. And also, really, it's it's important to understand that our goal is decentralization, right? That's the ultimate goal for everyone, but it's not the most important factor. We got to remember that the most important factor in changing finance of today is actually inclusion. Like finance for centuries has been extremely, extremely exclusive to the wealthy. And the problem with that is that wealth just creates a wealth gap. And the wealth gap creates violence on the streets, creates frustrated people because the access is not the same. Decentralization is amazing, but it's not the goal. The goal is inclusion. It's inclusion, it's accessibility, and it's having a fair ground for everyone. So please guys understand, and I am pro decentralization 110%, but it's not the most important message. The most important goal as of today is inclusion first, decentralization later. So thank you so much. And don't forget to check out SwissBorg. We are your favorite crypto wealth manager in Europe. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, Mahi, um, can we get a quick word from you where we can find the exchange, where we can find Twitter? Well, our website is aurex.exchange. Since we are exchanging, so aurex exchange, you can find us as well in all most, uh, the social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, aurex exchange as well. And uh, the Instagram as well, I, I say it. And uh, this is it where we can follow us. Thank you so much. Um, so we've got a couple more minutes. So I'm just going to go around the room and I'm going to ask a quick question. So when you first started uh, in cryptocurrency, what was your biggest fear? So we'll start with uh, Ign Ignis. Um. Well, I think sort of like I was I was uh, a victim of like all those kind of like uh, uh, lazy narratives about, you know, like the, I'm, I'm going to say a, a bunch of trigger words. So, you know, the, the tulip mania and uh, probably just one, what that, that one is enough. I think sort of like, yeah, um, I've, I've never actually found I've actually never met someone who is an actual expert of Bitcoin and crypto who is also a skeptic. So like once you have done your research, once you have kind of like fully appreciated kind of like the groundbreaking and revolutionary thinking behind it and how sort of like in, in the space of a mere 12 years, it's kind of co completely transformed the world. Now, Bitcoin in terms of its market capitalization is already bigger than the M1 supply of the UK money and it's going for silver, silver. Um, so I think, yeah, like once you truly kind of appreciate the narrative, uh, like it's, it's a no brainer. Thank you. Uh, Timothea? What was your biggest fear when you entered the market? Um, I suppose my, my biggest fear when I entered the market and still exists now is security. I mean, I think that there's so much work to be done to undo that kind of risky rhetoric that still sadly mm -hmm. plagues the industry. Um, and, you know, that there, while there has been a lot to kind of progress in terms of protecting user funds, I still think that, you know, that, the most important thing for me is having ownership of my my assets which when i first entered the space wasn't a, a, an easy solution yeah that that is actually getting a lot easier but uh that still yeah. is a lot of work so especially <laughs> you know as you need 
And a lot of people don't understand that you need extra security with 2FAs when you're having mm -hmm. um, exchange, you know, accounts and that sort of thing. So, Mahi, what was your biggest concern when you were entering the market? Well, security is all the time is uh, pressures as, as, as computing, as programming, as online. Security always an issue where we have to figure it out. But I think we are safe with the blockchain. It's really as a, a we are in a good position right now. But of course, of course, it's always challenging to to keep uh, to keep it on track and keep security higher than how how much we can and keep pushing it. For me, I have a simple vision that I really would like to see cryptocurrency in in, in on the hand of everyone used daily. And this is where we are facing that we need to push to bring it to everyone that we are using it as a daily. Everyone is using it. Everyone knows it. Everyone indicates that what is this and why it is safe and how to use it in a simplest way ever. This is what I think it, it, here, is, here is where I am focusing right now. And here is where I am afraid that we need to achieve this point as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And Alex, for you, where was your uh, greatest, what was your greatest fear? Yeah, thank you, Lisa. If I were a Disney character, I would be goofy <laughs> as I'm very <laughs> clumsy, forgetful. So uh, I think the most overrated quote in crypto for me is uh, not your keys, not your coins, simply because, you know, in terms of custody and I've had health issues in the past, you know, I, I really cannot trust having everything on a ledger. If my house burns down, if someone comes and steals my ledger at home, I really think that the, the whole non-custodial thing is a bit overrated for some people. And, you know, for those reasons, you know, I'd rather have my funds and a third party custodian. Obviously, I don't want it to be on exchange in a hot wallet that the exchange owns, uh, but I want it to be on a third party wallet so that if I die, if something happens to me, you know, that my family and everyone will be able to recuperate the wealth by proving that I'm dead or proving that, that something happened to me. And I think that's a really important thing because I know people who have lost, I, a good friend of mine lost $1.2 million because of a private key. His Bitcoin is gone. Uh, he accumulated wealth since 2013. And it, that's a very tragic situation, right, to have. So I think, you know, having not not just you know obviously non-custodial is amazing you can do that as well if you're tech savvy if you have a great memory if you have a good system where you'll be able to find your private keys or someone else will be able to find the private keys for you but uh not your coins not your keys not your coins for me is a bit overrated just because i'm super clumsy just like goofy <laughs> <laughs> i totally agree with that i've lost so many um wallets along the way paper wallets from the early days so yeah <laughs> i found one when i moved recently so, um, yeah, which was, I was very excited about that. <laughs> um, yeah, so thank you everyone for your time. It was, has been amazing to meet you all. And any, any closing words that you would all like to add? <laughs> thank you so much, guys. And I just think yeah. this is great to have different perspectives, people from different areas of the exchange and brokerage business. It was lovely sharing the panel with you all. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, my pleasure to be with you. Thank it's you so much. To share that. Thank you. And I'll throw it back to the, <laughs> the guys at um, Blockdown.